I'm Matt Bichot with REIT.com here in San Francisco for REIT World 2013. Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is Jay H. Shaw, the CEO of Hersha Hospitality Trust. Jay, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Matt. In September, Hersha announced the sale of 16 non-core hotels that would complete its transformation into an urban transient portfolio. Can you elaborate on exactly what you mean by that term and why you think Hersha needed to move in that direction? Sure, Matt. You know, for us, we have been working across the last several years, particularly since the downturn, to uh, focus more on the six major gateway markets in the United States. Uh, from Boston to New York to Washington, D.C., Miami, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, we felt that if we were to focus a pure play strategy on just these gateway markets, we'd be able to drive <coughs> overall a stronger uh, overall rev bar in our portfolio and achieve EBITDA growth rates that are above the national average. Uh, when we do studies on what are the drivers of EBITDA multiple in the hotel REIT space, we found that absolute rev pars and EBITDA growth, obviously, are, are two of the biggest drivers. And in order to uh, position the portfolio to be outperforming those areas, the sale of the non-core was an essential part. And what trends are you anticipating in terms of both your business and international travel next year? And how much of a concern has the slow economic recovery been to you and your company? Next year's trends are interesting. You know, it's tough to make a blanket statement about the recovery uh, in the lodging sector in the United States. We've had, uh, you know, real disparity in between markets. But what we have found is that the urban markets and hotels focused on corporate transient business, meaning mission critical business travel. Uh, not the large incentive group travel houses and not the large conference houses uh, have, have recovered very well in this cycle. That's been the real sweet spot of the, of the recovery. As we look across the next several years, you know, we expect this to be a recovery that's going to last, say, another two to three years, uh, and we expect to be seeing growth rates somewhere in the mid-single digits. Uh, international travel has been a terrific tailwind uh, and it's been a great story across the last several years. Uh, the United States is expected to have a um, international travel compounded annual growth rate of about 4.9 percent across the coming three to four years. Uh, this is a, a pretty attractive growth. It's growth that sometimes is in excess of what the market growth is. And so um, it's, been, it's been something that I think that most hoteliers have been focused on very closely. As the visa waiver programs in the United States continue with uh, foreign partners, you know, currently there's 37 countries that are part of the we visa waiver program, I think you're going to continue to see increased international travel. You know, we're, at a, we're in a very unique uh, stage in, uh, in the world's uh, social development. You know, there's more people emerging into the middle class around the globe uh, than ever before in our history. And, uh, and one of the things that folks entering the middle class do is they come to travel. And, uh, and the United States has, has become a very, very attractive destination for that. And, and lastly, how do occupancy and average daily rate levels look today? And, and are you seeing any sort of real difference among the, the, the major markets that you focus on? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the interesting thing about uh, occupancy and rate is that most of the United States has gotten back to peak occupancy levels. Uh, and there are a handful of markets that have uh, gotten to peak ADR levels, in some cases have exceeded them. Miami is a prime example. They're 5% above prior peak in occupancy and 15% above peak in prior rate. Uh, on the other hand, there's still a good number of markets that are stabilized with occupancy, but still anywhere from 9 to 1% uh, off of peak ADRs. And so those markets still have some strong runway for growth as we move through the remainder of the cycle. Jay, thank you so much for taking some time. It's been my pleasure. For more on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit REIT.com.